thanks to each of you for being here today. Um, to begin with, I, I wonder if any of you have any programs in place that use artificial intelligence or other basic data analytics tools that might help detect possible issues before they occur? General? Uh, so we, we do not have that. We are moving towards that right now. Uh, much like the Navy with uh, working with the Army Analytics Group, we're developing what we call the Army Safety and Occupational Health Enterprise Information Management System that will incorporate that, and that will start feeling that in the beginning of 19. Okay. Admiral? Yes, sir. Thanks for the question. Uh, I spoke earlier about partnering with Army Analytics and the fleet and type commanders out there to obtain uh, their data to collaboratively collaboratively share data and come up with deep dive analytic tools. Additionally, we're moving from our legacy safety reporting system, which is called the Web Enabled Safety System, which was fielded in about 2006, and we're moving to uh, what's now called RMI, Risk Management Information. We're actually uh, partnering with the Air Force using their uh, AFSAS, Air Force uh, Safety Automated System, and we're creating our data fields in there and we're populating that. Within uh, AFSAS by itself, there will be a couple tools, business intelligence tools, that will be able to just mine data at the squadron level level, ship level, individual unit level, to take a look at how they're doing compared to other units and things along those lines. Uh, that's kind of the, the uh, less deep dive stuff, and Army Analytics is going to be where we're going to get the big bang for the buck, sir. Okay. Sir? And as discussed, sir, that, that automated system for us that we stood up in 2007, moved to the cloud in 2014, about 370,000 records that are in there. And so we have this uh, layer of analytic tools that are there, but what we were also craving is access to other data and uh, other data and then things to handle big data analytics and that sort of thing. And so we, although we have a level of analytics that are there, we definitely want to ramp that up, sir. Okay, thanks for that. Uh, General Francis, I'd like to commend you on the Army's lowest three-year period of mishaps. In your testimony, you stated that most mishaps are the result of a series of events. Um, first of all, does the Army investigate different mishaps depending on the initial cause, or is it more of a blanket approach? No, we, the Army investigates all mishaps. Uh, regardless of the severity, we investigate all of them. And uh, re yeah, regardless of what we suspect is the underlying causal factor, we investigate them all. That's how we get the, the data that we do have. Okay. And how are mishap reviews prioritized, and do different causes play a part in that prioritization? Uh, it's really prioritized by severity. Uh, we, so the Combat Readiness Center, uh, we won't necessarily go out and use one of our centralized investigation teams to uh, investigate a Class D mishap, for instance. Uh, we will go do the most severe Class A's, and it's usually associated with a fatality when we, when we use our, our particular team. So uh, they're pri prioritized primarily on severity uh, versus any other uh, category. Are, are certain causes any more prevalent than others? Yes, human factors comprise about 70 uh, Six percent of our uh, current uh, uh, mishaps, and about nineteen percent uh, are material failures. So we we track those, and those that ratio has been pretty consistent over the thirty five years that Army Aviation has been a branch. Okay, the, uh, General Francis, the the global security environment is uh, obviously changing rapidly. As we transition away from counterinsurgency and strictly air to ground tactics into larger scale operations, is the mishap review process shifting accordingly? Yes, yeah, so what we're doing is trying to go from being reactive to more proactive. In other words, we're, we're taking a look at uh, the, the, where we have suffered the most uh, Class A mishaps in previous conflicts, and we have experienced those in conflicts like Desert Shield, Desert Storm, Bosnia and Kosovo, uh, and Iraq and Af Afghanistan. So as we sit here today, as, we, as the Army prepares for large-scale combat operations, we are looking very hard at what can we do to get after the problem now before we get launched into another conflict that may cause us to have that spike, and what can we do to prevent that now? Okay, and my, my last question is, you noted in your testimony that less severe mishaps are downgraded to review by local entities with, quote, abbreviated requirements. Does this more minor threshold of review lead to less effective results or recommendations? Uh, no, it does not. It, it simply means that uh, they, have, they, they have less of a requirement to uh, report that uh, to higher levels with a formal briefing. We still get all the data from those mishaps to uh, conduct analysis with. Okay, I, I want to make sure that abbreviated requirements doesn't necessarily lead to less thorough reviews. No, it does not. Okay, with that, I yield back. Thank you. Thank you.